Welcome to this video where we explore how Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector now integrates with Cisco ACI to deliver dynamic and scalable network security. My name is Christopher Grabowski, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Security Business Group. As data centers become more agile, security must keep up. Traditional manual updates to object groups just don't scale. There's where dynamic attributes come in, providing real-time visibility and control across your network. The Firepower Management Center consumes dynamic objects through REST API, which get synced and applied in firewall policy in near real time. This gives you flexibility and broad interoperability with cloud and on-premises systems, either by direct integration with Secure Workload and Cisco XDR, or via Dynamic Attributes Connector, also known as CSDAC, acting as the central intelligence layer. CSDAC aggregates dynamic attributes from various cloud and on-premises sources, cloud workloads, identity platforms, SAS public feeds, and turns them into actionable real-time dynamic object groups. And now with the latest update, CSDAC also supports integration with Cisco ACI bringing the power of dynamic object mappings to your on-prem network fabric. Let me illustrate how the Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector integrates with Cisco ACI and the Firepower Management Center to enable ongoing synchronization of security-relevant data. Here we have Cisco APIC Managing Tenant A, which includes multiple bridge domains with endpoint groups and endpoint security groups. These EPGs and ESGs represent logical groupings of workloads, each associated with specific IP addresses. CSDAC pulls information about the groupings and transforms them into dynamic object groups. These objects are then continuously synced with the management center and the managed firewalls. In this example, the ESG named web and EPG 3 and 4 are dynamically mapped to corresponding dynamic objects with their IPs and made available inside the firewall policy in near real time. This ongoing synchronization ensures that your firewall rules always reflect the current state of your ACI fabric, automatically adapting to changes as workloads move or scale. Before we dive into the configuration of the ACI connector, Let's take a look at the broad ecosystem of integrations supported by CSDAC. The cloud connectors allow CSDAC to ingest metadata from leading cloud platforms like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud, as well as virtualization platforms such as VMware. CSDAC can also integrate with Azure and AWS service tags as well as AWS security groups. We've also recently added support for multi-cloud defense enabling greater visibility and control across hybrid and multi-cloud environments. Public feeds and external connectors include integrations with productivity platforms like Office 365, WebEx, Zoom, and GitHub. These allow the use of ranges of IP addresses allocated to the SaaS applications. We also support generic text inputs, Cisco CyberVision for OT visibility, and PS Grid Cloud for identity and context sharing. ACI is now the newest supported connector, importing EPG and ESG with associated IP directly from ACI Fabric into your firewall dynamic objects. One important note, be sure to check which connectors are supported for your specific CSDAC form factor, whether you're using the cloud-delivered, standalone virtual appliance or native CSDAC embedded in Management Center. Let's begin the demonstration by logging into Cisco APIC. Since the CSDAC integrates with ACI via REST API, it requires a username and password with appropriate read-only permissions. Here I'm logging in with the credentials created specifically for CSDAC. Let's check the privileges assigned to this user. By navigating to View My Permissions, we can see that the account has read-only access to a specific tenant. In this case, one named after myself. This level of access is sufficient for CSDAC to read endpoint groups and endpoint security groups and their associated IP addresses. 
It is worth noting the scope of this account privileges will determine which tenants CSDAC can access and synchronize with Firewall Management Center. Let's now explore the actual EPG and ESG data in our tenant. Inside the tenant, I have two application profiles, demo application and network segments. Under these, we have several EPGs and ESGs representing different segments and layers of the application. Here you can see that each EPG and ESG is associated with learned IP addresses from the corresponding virtual machines or workloads. With that, we confirm the APIC site is ready. CSDAC account has visibility into the EPGs and ESGs and can pull in dynamic IP mappings. Now let's switch over to the CSDAC. In this example, I'm using a standalone CSDAC deployment, but you can also configure the ACI integration directly from your firewall management center, starting from the 10.0 release of software. We already have a connection to firewall management center configured under the adapters tab. Let's run a quick test to verify connectivity. And yes, it passes. CSDAC can successfully insert dynamic objects into FMC. Now let's configure the ACI connector. Under the connector tab, select Cisco APIC. We'll start by entering the name of this connection. You can set a polling interval. This determines how often CSDAC will query APIC for changes in EPGs and ESGs. Next, we define the site prefix. This prefix will be added to every dynamic object name that CSDAC creates. If you're migrating from an older solution like Endpoint Update App, it's important to match this prefix for consistency. Then enter the IP address of your APIC. If you're working with a multi-node APIC cluster, you can list additional IP addresses here as well. Now we'll provide here the same credentials we used earlier in APIC. Optionally, you can retrieve the APIC certificate to ensure secure communication. Let's test the connection. And great, it's successful. Now we save the configuration, and in just a few seconds, the connector status shows as OK. With the ACI connector active, let's move to Firewall Management Center and put those dynamic objects to use. Let's create a new firewall rule. We'll allow HTTPS and ICMP ping traffic from the application ESG to the database ESG. Under Dynamic Attributes, we now see dynamic objects automatically mapped from our EPGs and ESGs in ACI. I'll add those objects to source and destination, and we'll enable logging to verify the rule gets hit. And optionally, we can also enable intrusion and file policies to enforce deeper security. You can review the IPs currently mapped to each object, confirming that they reflect the learned IPs from ACI. Let's deploy the policy. Once deployed, any changes to EPG or ESG IP mappings in ACI will be automatically propagated via CSDAC to FMC with no need to redeploy the policy each time. Now, if we check the connection logs, we can see real-time events where the dynamic object base rule has been hit. The logs are decorated with the dynamic object names, confirming that the traffic from our ACI application tier reached the database tier and matched the rule we've just created. This wraps our demo of ACI to FMC integration using Cisco Secure Dynamic Attributes Connector.